When you look at different polls that are taken, you ask people, what do you want in life? It will be, I want money, I want love, I want health. And happiness is always on there. And sometimes the, the things that people want are because they think that will make them happy. And I think that what I stand upon is that we create our own happiness based on our perspective and how we look at situations and that life is always bringing you exactly what you need, not really what you want. Welcome to the Be It Till You See It podcast, where we talk about taking messy action, knowing that perfect is boring. I'm Leslie Logan, Pilates instructor and fitness business coach. I've trained thousands of people around the world. And the number one thing I see stopping people from achieving anything is self-doubt. My friends, action brings clarity and it's the antidote to fear. Each week, my guests will bring bold, executable, intrinsic, and targeted steps that you can use to put yourself first and be it till you see it. It's a practice, not a perfect. Let's get started. I'm just going to tell you right now, what I love about doing these intros is I do them after I've talked to the guests. I don't know if you know that, but that's how I do them. So sometimes I give up all the spoilers away in the intro. <laughs> Sorry. But also I think sometimes you can listen to a topic and you think, oh, maybe this person isn't for me. And I just want to make sure that you know that they're all here for you because you're going to pick up different things at different times. And if you even re-listen re to some of the episodes, you might pick up on different things. I have some podcast episodes that I like have saved and I'll go back and go, oh, I forgot that. Um, so anyways, uh, today's guest, she was referred to us and I looked at her website and I was like, heck yeah, I haven't had anyone talk about this. And let me just tell you, um, she was like better than I and like I could have ever anticipated. Um, I don't know what I was anticipating, but also like sometimes when you hear buzzwords like happiness or, you know, mindfulness and alignment, sometimes you're like, okay, can they really get down to like the brass tacks of like how to do that? Like as someone who likes to like know the nitty gritty, like can you tell me how to repeat this experiment that you've done? Y'all, she can. So you're going to leave with a smile on your face. It's so big. And you're going to learn a whole heck of a ton on happiness, yourself, permission and a little dose of face yoga in there. So my loves, thank you for being here. Thank you for always uh, listening to the podcast. Thank you for downloading it. You have no idea. Every time you download, it's a really big deal. It actually is like literally currency for us. So thank you. Every time you share a podcast with someone, even one person, you have no idea how impactful that is. So never underestimate the power of what you have in your hand and how you can impact the world. And this episode I think is really going to change your life in the best of ways. And it's a way it's going to change others around you as well. You're amazing. Thank you for being here. And here's Alice in a way. All right, be it babe. I'm really excited to have this amazing conversation. So Today's guest was introduced to us by a former guest, which is always so fun because it's someone who loved us so much and loved the experience. Like, you have to talk to this person. And when someone has Happiness University as like their business, of course, I have to talk to this person. <laughs> so Alice, in a way, welcome to the Be It Pod. Will you tell everyone who you are and what you're up to? Hi, Leslie. Thank you. I am Alice Inoue, and I live in Honolulu, Hawaii, and I'm the founder of a business called Happiness You. And we're in business for 10 years, and we opened as a brick and mortar, basically a place where you could learn everything you wanted to learn about life that you didn't learn in school. And so we do this through presentations, coaching, community groups, all of that. So really just to help people find clarity in life. Oh my goodness. 10 years ago, you started this as a brick and mortar. You're like, hey, come to school here. Come do yeah. happiness with me. Was that easy? Were people like, yes, that's exactly what I needed? Or was it people like, oh. what is that over there? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, you're doing what? Like, and, and like, wait, why? And I was doing, you know, life coaching. I'm an astrologer. I'm a feng shui person. So I was doing all this self-help kind of stuff. And um, I thought, well, wouldn't it be great? Because I met all these other experts that could also have information to offer. Wouldn't it be great to have a school? And so I wanted to call it the school of life. And people are like, life is hard. Why would we go to that? try to get a loan from the bank, forget it. They're like, no business model. Like, why don't you just do it online? But I really just wanted a place where people could come and get insight in yeah, in a brick and mortar at first. And we had like beanbag chairs and bright, colorful interior so that we could do that. But why it was difficult is the idea, while the idea was great, who, who wouldn't like a place called Happiness You? I felt that people just didn't make the time to come down and take care of themselves, their pet, their dog, their grandparents, their work. So it was a struggle, seriously, to really get people. I wanted members. I wanted people to come and take classes from all these great teachers. So it was hard. But I can I, I can say for about the fifth year, it started to kind of 
kind of take off. And then as the pandemic hit, we went online a lot. And then that was where it was become became really, really necessary. Yeah. So, yeah. I was going to say, you're probably like having all those years behind you when the pandemic hit, you were like set up to support people in a, yeah. in a way I, I, you know, it doesn't, it's, it sadly doesn't surprise me that it was hard to sell people on a happiness you place. Um, or, I, and I don't know that you were, if you were online at that time, if you would have if it would have any different, you know what I mean? Because people, it's almost like they see happiness is for people over there. Oh, it's easy for those. Happiness yeah. is for those people because of the life I had. I'm just, it's like not easy. It's not possible for, it's like, they don't believe it. Right. And my, um, yeah. is that what you found? Yeah. Or they're like, or they're like, is there just a whole bunch of unhappy people there? Do people just go and cry? <laughs> it was just the concept of it. Oh, like, you know what? My mother-in-law needs that class. Like I had all the quips and excuses and and then people said, it's like insurance. Just knowing I was there was good enough, but that didn't pay my bills. So right. it took it took some time, but I, I really believed in the vision. And I it's funny, now it's just what I do. And I, I live in, in Hawaii, so it's quite known here. And we just, since the pandemic, the last year or two, started this online ha- 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 happiness you hui, which is like a community gathering. So now we get to interact with more people and it's it's a lot better than yeah. it was. Yeah, I think also people got a... a, a- big reset on like what's important to them. Like, yeah. you know, um, yes, yes. okay. So let's just kind of talk about happiness because mm-hmm. I do, I do think when people say, Oh, my mother-in-law needs this. <laughs> it's like, Oh, but is your happiness box checked? So like what, what, is, what, is, what is happiness you defined as? And like, what are some mm-hmm. signs we need more happiness in our life? Okay. Like, so I think what it is, is, uh, and, and it's interesting that it's called happiness use. So of course, we're thinking of happiness. When you look at different polls that are taken, you ask people, what do you want in life? It will be, I want money. I want love. I want health. And happiness is always on there. And sometimes the, the things that people want are because they think that will make them happy. And I think that my um, what I stand upon is that we create our own happiness based on our perspective and how we look at situations and that life is always bringing you exactly what you need, not really what you want. And by shifting our perspective into just understanding how to navigate life, I think that's what it, what it is. And happiness, what I found out and why I was able to kind of open the, the school back in 2008, they had, uh, they had a bunch of science come out and say that happiness is a skill. It's something that you learn, just like how you learn to type or how you learn to play racquetball or something. The more you practice it, the happier you get. So what we do is we offer tools and they're just in the form of everyday life experiences, um, specifically such as um, like, how do you become happier? How do, how do you go and get happier? Like, is, you know, is it a reading a book? Is it, what is it? So the, the tools that have been proven to work and to kind of up your, you know, create you those neural networks that create more happiness is really at the end of the day, and this is so good because I've seen it happen and work with thousands of people. At the end of the day, you look back and you think of three specific things that went well. Because you know how it is at the end of the day, it's like, oh, that didn't go well. I didn't finish that. I still have to do that. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so stressed. So you make your brain scan the day and think of three specific things that went well. It has to be specific. You do this for seven days in a row. On the eighth day, magically, your brain forms a new neural network because we don't want to work hard. And it's hard work scanning the day and looking for what's good. So then all of a sudden, your brain will show you a little bit more of what's good. So that's why you hear about gratitude journals. I think a lot of times you don't, to do it correctly, I'll just say it's great to be grateful for this and grateful for that. But if you can write down, I am grateful for my my father or mother, because she or he did this. Like if you are specific, yeah. you can think about it when you're negative, you're so specific. I can't stand that person because she always da, 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 da. We're so specific when it's negative, but when it's positive, we're just like, Oh, I'm thankful for my body. I'm thankful for the day. And so that does not make you happier because we're focusing on the specifics of the negative. So it's focusing on the specifics of what is good. that is going to create that balance. Okay. I love this so much because I I love celebrations. Like I we have we have FYF, which is fuck yeah Friday. And so I, oh, Friday, I you must celebrate something that went well in your week because we have a lot of overachievers and perfectionists who listen. Hello, I see you. Um, and I I'm like if we could 
start doing it on Friday. Eventually you'll start doing it on Saturday too, or Sunday or Monday. But I do love that you're saying like at the end of the day, scan for what went well. So it's not what went perfect. It's not what like, it's like what went well today? What was, oh, my commute was actually so easy today. Like getting that specific. I like that. And it's true. Then your brain also just starts going, oh, this went well. And just starts looking for things because you're you're ending the day on a high note and you're, you're actually like, there's an act of uh, celebration and like what went well at the end of the day. I love this. Cause you're putting value. Cause we, we all know, we all know what didn't go well. We all know what, what we still have to do. We all know the stressors that's natural. Cause that comes to our brain first. But when you take that little extra effort, right? Just like you're exercising your body to be more in shape, you're exercising your brain to be smarter in the way that it feeds you information. And it's, it's as easy as choosing to do something like that. It's as easy as that. And that's what, why I'm so inspired by it because it's, you just, you don't just want to believe every thought that pops in your head because so many times it's just not even valuable to you. So we're looking for value, specific value, because it's always there if you look for it. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're 100% right. And also like we've had some brain experts on who are like, well, you're, if you're frustrated with yourself because you're always going to the negative, like just so you know, your brain is predisposed to do that for safety. Yeah. So like you, it's not, that's why we do have to practice. And I think it is actually really interesting that you're talking about this in a way because it's true, you know, happiness is a skill. And I think we think of it as an emotion, yeah. as yeah. something that should just be like, like air, like it should just be around yeah, us. Yeah, let's just kind of like get in the vibe of happiness. Yeah, and we're like, oh, I want to be around other happy people because I like, and it's like, well, yes, but also when you think of it as a muscle, as a skill, then it is something that you can get better at and that you can actually tap into like a like a second language you might know. You can like pick that out, yeah. right? This is really yeah. cool. Okay, so one of those tasks we could do to get better happiness skills is the celebration and end of the day. I love that. Have you ever met someone who thinks that they're like other people need your happiness training, but really they're not recognizing that they too, you know, you know, the projector. <laughs> yeah, of course. And what's really interesting is no one can change unless they want to change. Right. Mm-hmm. Like no one, like people will say, well, can, can, can I bring my daughter to you? Can I bring my friend to you? She really needs you. Uh, it's fine. Bring them, but they will not. It's, it's that self-awareness that I have that power to change my life. Cause we're so, without that self-awareness, we blame and complain and it's like everybody else's fault and, and tell someone's ready to say, you know what? I'm ready. Um, I want this. And sometimes they want fantasies, right? So, oh, they hang around the fairies and the, and the, the unicorns and, but then you come down to it, you're empty inside. So it's kind of like, it has to be a self-directed thing. So I never, I always feel like you can't just shove a book in someone's face. They have to be ready. So you can give them all this information Nothing will happen in one day, the paradigm shifts and then they, they're ready. Mm-hmm. So I think you can't really, can't really do much except take care of yourself. And the yeah. better that you can like cultivate your own life and your own happiness, let's call it, the more you'll impact others to do the same. So yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. Be, the, so it's like hard, right? be the change that you want to see, right? <laughs> yeah, I know it sounds so cliche, but it really is like yeah. sometimes I feel like you can't you can't change the people around you. And if anyone bothers you or irritates you, they're really there to help you grow and move, move. You know, yeah. It's just that complete ownership of your life. And, and that's where I feel like you start having control yeah. over what's going on in your life. What are some of your favorite ways to take care and prioritize yourself? Because, you know, as you said, like we have to take care of ourselves. We have to, we have to work on ourselves. Yeah. So like, what are your favorite ways to do that right now? So my favorite way, which is something that I've been really talking about a lot lately that I realized, have you ever heard, have you ever heard people say, uh, I don't have time for myself. I I, I have work. I have my kids. I have this. Everybody needs a piece of me and I'll take what's left, but there's nothing left at the end of the day, the week or a month. So my recent, funny you should ask this recently, uh, when I talked to my community and, and my people, I said, think of yourself like a client, put yourself in the calendar. Like I always, I had time to come on your podcast. Why don't I have time to talk to myself, right? So we talk to everybody else, but we don't talk to ourselves. So what I do is I block out time for myself. It's so simple, uh, but it's so important because I am the fuel for everything I do say or, 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 or achieve. So I know that to nourish myself is the most important thing. So that's how I do it. I actually schedule blocks of time and if I have to move it, that's fine, but I move it and I don't accept anything that's beyond what I, I want. And everyone's doing the journey, how to say no, draw your boundaries. And that's why we come in handy at Happiness Issue because we talk about how important you are as a, as a, as a, as a source of your own happiness. 
So yeah, I think it's scheduling me into my schedule. Yeah, that's my, that's I, it. You know, I love that you said this because I literally just told somebody right before you got on a recording. Um, they said, "Oh, I'm not making enough time for what all the things I want to do," and I'm like, "Well, are they?" are the things you want to do in your calendar? (laughs) And they're just like, no. And I'm like, the only way I get things done, you guys, is if it's in my, it literally is in my calendar. Like it literally says done for the day. Like as soon as we're done recording, it says done for the day. Why? Mm -hmm. So that I don't just like go, oh, I have a, I have a couple more hours till dinner. No, I don't. I'm done for the day. Like (laughs) I have, um, like I have a, a a block of time that's like free time and it's not really free to do whatever. There's a list of things I can choose from in that Mm -hmm. block. So it's like, you can go for a walk around the block. You could read a book. You could lay in front of this. Like, so I can go, Oh, what do, what do I want to do right now for me? (laughs) Yeah. And you know, our moments today, right? This moment is seeding the next moment. So if we're always seeding busy moments, we never really get out of that busy life. So if we can seed some moments, just some moments, and, and if you don't mind, let me just share one more thing. Yeah. People have so much to do, right? So much to do. We're busy, busy, busy. Now, if you don't have a deadline and you are not taking downtime for yourself, what are you going to do? You're going to get distracted. You're going to pick up your phone and all of a sudden you're on the end. You're going to feel guilty while you're doing other stuff thinking you should be working, and then you're just splitting your energy, not taking a break. So if you're going to get distracted, take that phone, take that item, whatever you're distracted by, go and go, I am inspired to do this right now because you're not getting any work done anyway. To be distracted and recognizing we live in a polar world, up, down, left, right, hot, cold, sweet, sour, night and day. We, If we exhale, we're doing all this exhaling, we need to inhale. So it's like just recognizing we are human beings, like we need balance. And so if you don't create balance, your body will take it. It'll just take it and you'll get distracted and feel frustrated because you think you're not productive, not getting anything done. Yeah. So yeah. give yourself I, yeah. permission. Take a break. <laughs> You're taking it anyway, you know? I know. Well, that's just it. Like, I love the reframe. It's like, I'm inspired to be distracted on my phone right now. Like, just like take ownership of it. And then you don't feel like you wasted the time because you chose to do it. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Because you're doing it anyway. Just like you're eating, like, you don't, you're on a diet. You shouldn't eat chocolate cake. Oh, delicious chocolate cake comes. You're eating it. You're feeling guilty. I shouldn't be eating it. You're not even enjoying the beautiful, delicious cake because you're feeling guilty. Then you feel bad. Then you feel fat. And then like, what's the use? You're going to eat the cake, eat the cake. You're going to get distracted, be distracted. Giving yourself permission for downtime allows you to be more productive and bring your whole self to the table. So the key is bring your whole self to whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. Don't say should. I should be exercising more. I should be cleaning my room because you're not. You're doing something else. Value what you're doing. And if you say I should, ask yourself why. Who says? It's somebody's voice in your head. So again, it comes back to owning your life, owning your time you create your moments. And so I, I just find that sometimes we need to give ourselves permission. Yeah. Sometimes. I think so. A lot of times. <laughs> yeah. And also permission to be happy, right? I think that yeah. that's another, uh, there's a lot of guilt around happiness. Like okay. if there's something- Do I deserve it? Yeah. I don't deserve Or also uh, I shouldn't be happy right now because the world is like caving in on all of us. <laughs> no, and, and that's a good point. The world is going through so much chaos right now. Our economic turmoil, financial turmoil, all of the advent of AI, technology, jobs being lost, like go on and on. So if we get too caught up in that, we start feeling like that's our problem. And if it is your problem, go out and do something about it. But if it's not your problem, worrying about it is not going to do any good. Create good where you're at, you know, eat, eat good food, take care of your friends and your family. Like it's just, we have to bring our energy back. It's, it's hard. It's very difficult because there's a lot of worry and concern about the future. Yeah, I think that that's such a great point to highlight. Like if it is your job to solve that problem in this world. Yeah, then go do something, yeah, if you feel really (laughs) led to. But like, there's no amount of things I could do to stop the failure of the bank. There's no amount of things I can do to stop the political agendas that are happening. And if I feel like I'm led to go march or go do something, I'll go do it. But it's not that I don't, so, so how do I say it? It's just like, it doesn't mean you don't care. It means you care enough about yourself to realize that This is not your journey. Your journey could be somewhere else. And we all contribute to our journeys in different ways. Yeah. I think that's like, it's like, if you're called, I had a friend who, because of, you know, the school shootings that are happening, she's got children. And I watched her like add to the things that she does in a day by like creating a group and, and, and getting, uh, finding out what she can do in her community, in her city. Like she like found out what she could do. She found people to help her do it and she's doing it versus like, 
talking about it with your friends every time you see them and like just creating worry. It's like, then go do something or go vote for the person who can do something. But like you just lamenting over it is actually removing happiness and possibility from everybody around you throughout the whole day. Yeah. Yeah. Because people say, well, don't you care? How can you just be so nonchalant? It's like, it's not like I don't care. I just know that that's not, that's not where I'm going to place my energy. I feel like I can do more good here. So it's like choosing what you do during the day, choosing it's that responsibility of what are you doing and what are is what you're saying in alignment with what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. You know, we, um, we've had people on before who like talked about like charitable work and it's like, cause I'm like, yeah. how, like, there's so many things. And she's like, you pick one you're passionate about and you just go all in and you know that like, yes, that other one needs it too. But like, you know, the, like make the change where you can make it and then, yeah. and, and, and give yourself permission to be okay with like that. That is enough. And, yeah. I, and it's, and I don't say I said the same, same as you, Alice, I don't say it to be nonchalant, but it's like, we're no good to anybody treating ourselves like we're not good enough and not taking time for ourselves. You, you can't, you can't even be kind to the person you're buying coffee from. You can't even be kind when you're driving. You can't be kind to what you're working with. So like, we do have to figure out a way that we can show up and make the impact we want to make and then give ourselves permission for not making an impact somewhere else that Absolutely. may not be possible. Yeah. Yes. Yes. What yes. are your favorite go-tos for giving yourself permission? <laughs> I've practiced it so much that it becomes a habit. And that's really what I think is so valuable about make your life better. So if you if you or someone came and they said, you know, I just don't feel happy, right? So so I just don't feel happy. I, I want to be happy. So I would say, well, what do you want? You know, what do you want? And then they I want more time for myself, right? Okay, let's find out how to make time. But I can't because of this and that. Then we and so it's giving yourself permission and that's all it is. And once you do it, that feeling of power is so um, freeing in a sense. So if you if I if I would take an informal survey of what people want in life, I know there's scientific studies done, but just through the people I've worked with, people want uh, love, they want peace, and they want they want freedom, and they want joy and happiness, love, peace, and it usually comes down to when they come with a problem. These are one of the things. It's like they want freedom from such and such. They want peace. They want love, or they want happiness. So. Yeah, it mm-hmm. is. It's it's tough now, right? To um, yeah. to kind of be feel valued enough. So we have to always. It's just the, the the opposite. You have to look for exactly why do you deserve it. And if people say I don't deserve it, you have to dig a little. Like who says that? Like you heard that somewhere. That's not you. Right. Right. I um. That like it always goes back to getting to know yourself and like figuring out why you have the story that you have for yourself. Like who t- like who yeah. told you that? Who said that? Yeah. Um. And also like. I, um, you know, I love it when you're like, why do you want that? Oh, cause I like keep going. Well, then why do you want that? Like just digging down a little yeah. bit more, but you know, mm-hmm. giving yourself permission, you said you've been doing it so much. I think people forget, like, you don't have to give yourself permission to take a whole day off y'all. You just give yourself permission to take five minutes without mm-hmm. your device, you know, <laughs> or yeah. take te- like get up 10 minutes, like give yourself permission to read for 10 minutes before you start mm-hmm. something else in your day, you know, like. Um, I, I happen to love like giving myself permission to play hooky. Like I'm like, I may or may not <laughs> play hooky for Mars most of tomorrow. And I'm really excited for whatever I decide there. But like, you know, it, there's something about it that can be really fun. And it, it is, uh, it is a practice and it's going to feel weird in the beginning. Cause you're like, I'm giving myself permission to do nothing right now. <laughs> yes. I have a really good one. Have you guys, have you ever, um, been working and then it's like you have to use the bathroom but you just hold it because you're like working and then all of a sudden you're like okay i gotta go and then you run to the bathroom and then you're running back so there's this thing that i've uh that i started to do because people say i'm too busy to practice mindfulness so what you do is you have to use the bathroom anyway right so use the time from when you're at your desk to walk to the bathroom and that's when you that's your mind that's your self time you breathe you count the steps you feel the soap on the water you smell it you wash your hands so you, you do it, you stay in that moment and that gives your brain a break. When you wash dishes, instead of just going, oh, dishes, yuck, I hate it. Hey, this is self-time. Just enjoy the cleaning of it, be in that moment. Like it's just putting these moments of peace because we're in such a harried, hectic life sometimes. And so there are times like that you can do it. You're walking from your office to the car, your home to the car, just these types of habits bring a bits of peace into your life because like i said we seed the moment so if we can see the moment with some mindfulness some being present like just take 10 breaths as you're walking to the breathroom and come back i guarantee you'll feel better you're putting more oxygen in your brain 
You've given yourself a break. You can be present. Otherwise, we're scattered. And if you're scattered, you're not even going to remember like yesterday or last week because you're going to be like, oh, my God, I was so busy. I don't remember a thing about last year. And so if if life is meant to be lived, we have to live it and bring our mind into the present versus worrying about the past and figuring out what about the future. Just like just be here because we're OK. Like you're OK. We're all here. OK, today, this minute might not feel like it. But if we start seeding a little bit more, it starts to lighten that experience and expand like that time horizon. Yeah, 100%. While you were talking about this, I I recalled like I took a mindfulness training. So when I lived mm. in LA, I lived in the UCLA neighborhood and UCLA yeah. has a mindfulness training. You could actually get certified in mindfulness. And I thought, well, not even so certified, cool. you get like a degree. And I'm like, cool, I should go do that. I mean, I didn't, you guys, because you needed to go to three silent retreats and that meant also no writing. And I was like, no writing, no speaking. Like, oh my God, I, yes. I'm so sorry. I need that to put my thoughts somewhere. <laughs> I'm an Aquarius. Yeah. I got to put my thoughts somewhere. <laughs> so yeah. uh, however, I did take some of the trainings just to like preemptively get there. And one mm -hmm. of the things I remember thinking, this is crazy. We were just taking, we had to freeze grapes and then like with an online class before COVID, they're like, okay, you're going to take one of your frozen grapes, you're going to put it in your mouth and you're just going to sit there and like pay attention to it. And I was like, what in the world? And what is so funny is I remember going, I've never paid attention to the grape in my mouth. Or maybe I had one as a kid, but I certainly haven't done it as an adult. And it was like these simple things, like as you're saying, then people might be going, really? What? It's like, yeah, you don't realize how you're not even paying attention to when you walk down the hallway. You're thinking about what you left at your desk or you're thinking about where you need to go when you get back. And it's like, what if you just walked to the hall, like what if you walk from your car to the door and just like didn't think about anything, but except for like, oh, look at the plants or look at the sky or count your steps. Like, like people don't realize that counting is a way of being mindful because you're not, <laughs> you're bringing yourself. Yeah. yeah. So um, I love that. One of the trainings I did when I was doing a habits training, he, uh, BJ Fogg was saying like, we all have things we do every morning every mm -hmm. afternoon, every evening. Like it just happens because those are like when your meals are also happening, but also like commutes. And he said like, really look at count, write down all the things you already do without even thinking about it because you can place habits there, like being mindful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, you know, if you know you're going to brush your teeth, you can be mindful while you're brushing your teeth. <laughs> yes. All of that. And it just takes a little bit of effort, but once it becomes a habit, it's something that really is like moments for yourself. It's so it's so it's so hard, but yet so easy. And that's what's interesting. Some people just say, I don't have time. I got to wait until I finish everything else before I do something for myself. And the answer is you don't have to change your life or relationship. You can start doing stuff right in the day. And that really um, it can be very profoundly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What are you excited about right now? What are you what are you most excited about right now? Right now, what I'm really excited about is I created a psychometric system based on the Chinese five elements of wood, water, fire, all of that. So, so it's of these elements and it's called it's um, and, and I what I took these Chinese elements and I personified them and made them into superheroes. And I know there's no video here, but like I've created like superhero characters around it. So it's an assessment that I created, wrote a book on it and everything. And uh, it started becoming part of team building and corporate team building. And then through a crazy series of synchronicities, uh, McDonald's found it. And so I'm able to, I've been able to like um, kind of see this thing. And all it is, is about, about if, if you, if you take my, my assessment, it's like you take the assessment, it's like, there's a book, it's online, it's free. Um, and anyway, you take the assessment and you come out with an archetype, like I'm the intuitive luminary, you might be the spontaneous initiator. And so there's these 20 archetypes, but it tells you what your superpowers are, what your weaknesses are. So I guess right now I'm really inspired in just, up leveling that whole thing and licensing it and all of that. So that's oh what my I'm god, right that's pretty exciting. If McDonald's is like, hey, <laughs> we want to do yeah. also like so cool to be able to partner with a company that can touch so many people in a way and maybe get them to think of themselves in a, in a positive way. Like that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. So I feel like that's been really fun, and other large sort of um, national organizations have picked that up. And I'm also really excited, of course, about my happiness you hooey because. I've never done, I was all such an in-person thing. Like I've been, I maybe I'm like old school and you know, I'm a lot older than most people. So it's like being in person is a thing, but then because of the pandemic, so we went online and now it's super fun because like how you have me on doing like this podcast, like I get to do these little weekly things. And um, yeah, I'm actually really inspired by that. That's number two. And one more thing, 
Over the pandemic, I found face yoga. <laughs> okay, I read this in your notes and I was like, I really do hope that she brings this up. So, okay, I heard about face yoga and I'm going to be honest, I like, I was like, I don't know that I wanted to come up through my feet. So I'm just not going to Google it because then I'll get face yoga prompts. But I'm looking at you right yeah. now and I'm just going to say, I need to know what you're doing. <laughs> okay, so I turned 60 next year. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, um, so I, when I, when I started, when I turned 50, I started noticing um, like that I was getting that square look. You know, it's normal for jowls, nasolabial folds and all of that to um, come up. Oh, it's the pandemic. And then somehow I saw a little thing on face yoga and I was like, huh, that's really interesting. But this is what it is. We have 57 muscles um, above our, from our neck up. And if you think about exercise, we know to exercise our biceps, our glutes, our, our abs to stay healthy. But these muscles never get any exercise and they just droop. So give that gravity. They just, it falls, your skin is stuck to your muscles. So your skin droops, you lose collagen, elastin, you start drooping. I bought this five minute yoga book and um, I just started doing it, watching TV, like weird stuff, right? And then one day I was like, oh my God, my jowls are gone. I'm not even kidding you. So you see my face right now. Right? I see it, but I don't watch it on a, YouTube, y'all. We can see your face. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have like flapping stuff. I used to jog and flap. And then my eyes, I used to have to like hold it up because my eyelids would bump on my eyelashes. So I was able to kind of lift my face naturally because the, the, the muscles on your face are so thin. A little bit of exercise, it just kind of puts them in shape. I was so inspired. I, I got certified. I started a face club. I, I, and so I do, I teach, I teach face yoga. I would, I do it because I love it. It helps me. And I just, <laughs> I just love it. So yeah. So it's a little bit odd. Um, but if you do it correctly, the, it's it's not like I'm going to say if, if plastic surgery is great, fillers, Botox, all that's great. If that works for you, that's totally great because it, you feel you're going to want to feel better. But I guess for me, I just thought it was kind of cool since I do the organic stuff that I could just like I, lift my face. I'm obsessed because I read it. And I was like, OK, hold on. Let's see. And then you came on and I was like, OK, <laughs> we need to do this. We should do it now because if I do it now, just imagine what I'll look like when I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, that's because you're so young. So the idea here is if you do it, you prevent yourself from aging. It's really hard to reverse age. Once it's down, you're fighting against gravity. Yeah. Um, but it yeah. can be done. And it's, uh, it's inspired. So this is why. When I used to look in the mirror, I would be like, oh, my God, another wrinkle. And, oh, this eye is like drooping. Now, when you look, anyone who does face yoga, we're investing in our face. We're putting time in. So the one hour practice, we breathe and we release tension and we uh, massage, we do all kinds of stuff, acupressure, we do meditation at the end. So it's like a whole one hour self care hour. Um, but now I bet everybody in that face club, when they're going to wash their face, they're looking for improvements. They're saying, oh, look, that's better. And that's putting positive energy because normally you look at what's wrong when you look in the mirror. Like nobody goes like, Oh my God, how am I? I'm so beautiful. It's like my eye bags, you know, my. I love that you <laughs> are saying it that way because I think so many people go, like, Oh my gosh, Leslie, you two are getting like really vain. But it's actually not. It's about like looking at yourself and seeing what's going well and like looking and seeing positive things. And, and, and also just another way to spend time with yourself. I love, mm -hmm. like, I need to get back into my gua sha practice, but I loved like yes, the you do active, gua sha too? Yes. Right. I got in the ad, like, they're active doing it at night. I was like, Look at me taking care of myself. <laughs> Yes, it's, you are. You're actually actually stimulating blood flow and oxygen to your face and collagen and elastin. They need that in order to, 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 to be strong. So, yeah. So I think it's inner beauty and outer beauty are connected. It really yeah. is. And some people said, oh, you're happy to see you. Why are you so vain doing outer things? I'm like, no, I, I feel good about investing in myself. I don't care if I'm 50, 60, 70. If I look the best that I can be at wherever I'm at. I feel good, you know? So yeah. it's just, it's just perspective. It really is. I think you're right. And I think it's also like, it is the inner and the outer, they kind of feed into each other. And so if you're only saying negative things about yourself outside, guess what's happening on the inside. So yes. it, it, it's kind of like, you know, you're working yeah. at both ends. Oh my gosh, Alice, yeah. this has been so fun. We're not done yet, but we're gonna take a brief break and then find out where people can find you, follow you, do face yoga with you. <laughs> okay, Alice, where do you like to hang out? Where can they, um, where can they stalk you a little bit in the good way? Oh, best is probably just go to the website. It's your, like Y-O-U-R, your happiness and the letter U.com. Everything's on there, your happiness, you.com. And if you are into like Facebook and Instagram and all that, like then I post all these little things. It's all wisdom stuff. So Facebook, it's Alice, we know a I N O U E life guidance or in um, Instagram, it's Alice underscore, you know, a, uh, 
we're going to start a face yoga on Instagram too. I just thought I should do that to do yeah. so, so you can practice some exercises. Yeah. I, I, I was going to say, do you have like any reels? <laughs> Can do it with yeah, we you. do. Like, yeah, you know, do you have a post uh, underneath when after I show up on your podcast? Oh yeah, we're gonna have. Because I have one. I have this one like gift, and then you, you know, I'll, I'll give it to you, and then you guys can actually do a face yoga class on. There's like a face yoga class okay. to try. I want yeah. that link. We're gonna put in the show notes. I'm gonna do okay. it. Everyone who's listening, I would like you to tag uh, Alice and myself when you have done your face yoga. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have given us so many great tips, honestly, like really awesome tips. But before I let you go for the too long, didn't read people for the people who just want to, what is something bold, executable, intrinsic or targeted step people can take to be it till they see it? Schedule yourself in. Mm -hmm. Get to know yourself again. Mm -hmm. So put yourself into your schedule and do what you want. Just give yourself permission to get to know yourself simply because when we first meet somebody and we fall in love, all we want to do is ask them, what do you like? What's your favorite color? What, what do you do? We, we, we want to get to know others, but sometimes I feel like we centered so much on others that we forget to center back on ourselves, and we don't even know what we want anymore. If I ask you, what do you want to be happy? Like some people don't even know. So I would say actionable steps, schedule yourself in, mm. get to know yourself again. Yeah. Yeah. And a little dating of yourself. I love that. You know what? You can all get like those like top dating questions you could ask someone then just ask yourself. I love that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Alice, this is so fun. I'm so happy that our paths across. I just I divine appointments like this are just why this podcast exists. So thank you for being here and sharing your amazingness. Thank you for listening. Let us know how you're going to use these tips in your life. I I mean I really want to know because I hope this brings a little more happiness to all of us. And until next time, be it till you see it. That's all I got for this episode of the Be It Till You See It podcast. One thing that would help both myself and future listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a review and follow or subscribe for free wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, make sure to introduce yourself over at the Be It Pod on Instagram. I would love to know more about you. Share this episode with whoever you think needs to hear it. Help us and others be it till you see it. Have an awesome day. Be It Till You See It is a production of the Bloom Podcast Network. It's written, filmed, and recorded by your hosts, Leslie Logan and me, Brad Kroll. It is produced and edited by the Epic team at Desenio. Our theme music is by Ali at Apex Production Music and our branding by designer and artist, Gianfranco Chofi. Special thanks to Melissa Solomon for creating our visuals and Samena Velazquez for our transcriptions. Also to Angelina Herico for adding all the content to our website. And finally to Meredith Kroll for keeping us all on point and on time.